Hello, it's a culture genie with 10 facts about the transatlantic slave trade that you probably didn't know about. Number one. The Atlantic slave trade starts a lot earlier than you think. The Portuguese began trafficking captives in the beginning of the 15th century. In England, the War of the Roses had not even begun. And this was with the first transportation of slaves across the ocean to various Atlantic islands. But it was arguably older than that, as you will see further along this list of facts. Number two. The transatlantic slave trade wasn't initially actually transatlantic. In the early days, when the Portuguese began to sail the slaves, the enslaved Africans were brought to Portugal or to the Atlantic islands like Madeira to be put to work on the fields there. And this was not a new development, as the slave trade on the Iberian Peninsula had been there for a long time. And in fact, it is number three. The transatlantic slave trade was initially just an extension of the African Arabic Islamic slave trade that had been present on the Iberian Peninsula ever since Tariq ibn Ziyad had conquered the Iberian Peninsula. Thus, ensuring a period of Arabic Islamic influence that would last almost 800 years from 711 to 1492 with the fall of the Emirate of Granada. This long period was a period of great influence upon the Iberian peoples in many matters, among them slavery. As you can notice that the initial laws about slavery that the Portuguese and the Spanish used were very similar to, or even were based upon the concepts of slavery that was present in the Sharia that was practiced on the Iberian Peninsula and in the closest neighboring Islamic regions such as Morocco. And you also have the fact that initially most slaves for the transatlantic slave trade were bought in ports in the Arabic Islamic world. And speaking about that slave trade, it is time to go to number four. The transatlantic slave trade involved less people than the slave trade in North Africa and the Ethiopic Arabian Indian Triangle slave trade in East Africa. Though it should be said that these slave trades had been present for a far longer time than the transatlantic slave trade. However, in the amount of slaves sold every year and in the economical importance of the trade, they were not that different from the transatlantic slave trade. And the transatlantic slave trade was just another trade network during its time. Number five. The slaves sold to the Europeans in the transatlantic slave trade were usually captured by third parties and not by the Europeans themselves. So there were local people that captured people from neighboring tribes or kingdoms and sold them into slavery to the Europeans through various middlemen in various important commercial ports along the northwestern African coast. Again, it's important to stress that the transatlantic slave trade was initially just an extension of the North African slave trade generally. So these people would have been captured and sold to other slave owners in North Africa instead of being sold to Europeans if the Europeans were not there at the beginning. Though later in the transatlantic slave trade the increased demand for slaves over in the colonies of the Americas did cause an increase in slavery generally. Number six. 
the colonies that would become the United States of America was not a significant destination for slave ships, if you look at the transatlantic slave trade as a whole. When we picture slavery, we usually look only at the slavery found in the south of the United States. But in reality, only about 5% of the slaves in the transatlantic slave trade were headed for the coast of the present day United States. Most enslaved people were carried to the Caribbean, around 45%, or to Brazil, where they would be later distributed to the other parts of South and Central America. Number 7. The transatlantic slave trade is often imagined as a triangle slave trade where slavers sailed from European ports carrying goods manufactured in Europe and then the slavers would trade these goods for captives on the African coast and then they would sail to the new world with these slaves and sell them there and return to Europe with raw material from the colonies in the Americas, thus completing the triangle. However, this is actually not really true. Much of the trade to Brazil, however, was bilateral. Slavers left Brazil and headed to Angola and North Africa to buy slaves, and then came straight back to Brazil with the slaves. And so was also the case with most of the Spanish possessions and their slave trade. It was only really French and English slave traders that participated in this sort of triangular slave trade. The Portuguese and the Spanish did not. They traded more directly and often with more favorable deals. Which makes sense considering that both the Portuguese and the Spanish were bigger slave buyers than the French and the English. Thus they often didn't need to go through the hurdle of creating special manufactured goods in order to incentivize the trade. They had enough money and just pure bulk buying that they didn't need special incentives to get their slaves. Number 8. The Atlantic slave trade lasted longer than you imagine. The British abolished the slave trade in 1807. And so did the Americans. Though they still kept slaves, they did not buy any more from Africa after 1807. However, the trade continued down to the 1850s in the Portuguese and Spanish holdings. And the last known slave ship which carried captives to a Spanish possession carried them to Cuba and sailed in 1866. For reference, the American Civil War ended 1865 and it should also be noted that this was the end of buying slaves from Africa. It was not the end of slavery in Central and South America and it would continue for several decades afterwards and be abolished gradually. Number 9 With the Atlantic slave trade being abolished in the year 1866 and considered as a separate slave trade from the Arabic Islamic slave trade in the 15th century. Then the transatlantic slave trade lasted for a much shorter period of time than the Arabic Islamic slave trade that began in the 7th century and lasted up to the 20th century when the Ottoman Empire began to try to crack down upon it after having signed treaties in the 19th century forbidding slavery. However, slavery would remain in the Ottoman Empire until its abolishment by Kemal Ataturk in the 1920s. And even up to modern day, though there existed no enormous slave trade on an international stage, slavery was still practiced in the 21st century in the countries of Sudan and Mauritania. Number 10. The transatlantic slave trade and the buying of slaves increased demand on slaves, which caused price increases in the Middle East and North African region, especially 
during the 17th to the 18th century, which in turn actually caused problems for the Ottoman economy, which was heavily dependent upon slavery and price increases of slaves and the cost of slavery did force better treatment of slaves as increased prices meant that it was much more important to keep slaves alive and well as slaves became an increasingly costly investment though increased demand did also result in more slavery but again it did not increase that radically to compensate for the increased demand due to various political and historical reasons and due to the fact that there is a limited number of people you can actually enslave without causing issues. In any case the supply did not meet demand and thus prices increased. And I thought that this fact would be interesting just because it shows how much slaves are subject to the same laws of supply and demand as any other wear or item. And it also shows how the transatlantic slave trade was integrated into a larger economical system with ramifications even outside of it. Now this video is not here to defend the transatlantic slave trade. The goal is instead just to explain some interesting facts about it. And I hope that these 10 short facts have been interesting to you. If you have any questions you can post them in the comment section, I will try to respond. And also if you have any other views about this video or about the transatlantic slave trade, then also post them. I like discussions and interacting with you, my viewers. Please do subscribe as it would help the channel spread awareness about the humanities. Stärk välkomna till min